This is the Veterinary Project Podcast, episode 128. Welcome to the show created by vets featuring absolutely no pets. This is the Veterinary Project Podcast, hosted by Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Our resident veterinarians have swapped out their stethoscopes in favor of microphones to bring you the Veterinary Project Podcast, a show focused on real conversations aimed to connect this amazing profession full of remarkable people. Through the sharing of collective stories and wisdom and connecting over the many unique challenges we face, we invite you to join our community of veterinary professionals leading intentional lives. And now, here are the hosts of the Veterinary Project Podcast, Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Another episode of the Veterinary Project Podcast. Got to start by giving kudos and props to my buddy, Johnny, here. You were out in Saskatoon. We met up at the WCVM. And I have to say, it was fun and it was kind of a pleasure to watch you in action. I'm a big fan of watching people in their element, doing their thing, mastering their craft. And for anyone who has not seen Jonathan at a large gathering, this was what? Veterinary Industry Partner Day. So there's booths set up. That is your world, man. You know, it was cool to see. Well, I appreciate the kudos, bud. It's a fun time. In my view, as an extrovert, when you're able to be able to uh, form relationships, and this time is the second year in a row we've done this at WCVM, have some more in-depth conversation. It's a lot of fun. And it's always great to see the different reps that are out there. We had a talk the day before and we got to share your book, which also was exciting on publication day. I guess. Yeah, that was launch day. Yeah, that was cool to to get to hand a few copies out and have that come out. Before I bounce over, I'm not going to bounce over that. Your energy, man, is kind of contagious. That's really what I wanted to get across when I was watching you. I think it's very cool how you can bring such a positive energy to sort of every room or every booth that you're in. Well, I appreciate that, dude. I don't know what to say. It's the timing and I don't have to fake it to on that part. That's I enjoy those times. And you have a time that you have to be in office, you have to be executing and doing, but just as important is to be in the field, learning, hearing, seeing what's on the ground, which is kind of our discussion today as well. So thanks. Yeah. And that's, We thought we would, uh, you know, bring another episode out on veterinary employment contracts for everyone. We did tackle this back on February 10th, 2021. It was episode 26. So quite a while ago, this is kind of part two. We're going to update it. We're going to add some things in. There's more hot button sort of topics we're going to touch on. And what prompted this was, Jonathan, when you were out in Saskatoon, I believe you gave a presentation all about this to the WCVM students. And then again, the following day back in Calgary at their vet school. So you've been around presenting on this. I know you've been at other virtual contracts where this has been an area you speak about. Yeah, we had a blast. So for anybody in Saskatoon or Calgary, Western Canada, this is the first time I've been able to present live COVID, everything else going on. And I think we had over a hundred students available for WCVM event. And it was a lot of fun. I literally only had 10 slides And it's more the Q&A. It's really opening up the crowd to be able to say, hey, what do you need to know about salaries? And and interestingly enough, especially in Canada, let's talk numbers. And a number of them had never actually chatted salary before I went, guys, I'm not leaving this room. We're talking dollars. I want to know what you're hearing out there for dollars. Let's talk about what CE dollars out there. Let's talk about those things that are making everybody in the room uncomfortable and Also for me, you know, you're speaking about it from an economic front. There's the tangibles and intangibles. So you're bouncing back and forth with people. It was a lot of fun. That is awesome. That's I'm going off script already. I want to know the feeling in the room when money comes up and you had mentioned uncomfortable. So I'm assuming that's maybe how the students started. Did you get them to open up? Like did people get comfortable talking about money? Yes, because we had everything from first to fourth years. And this is in Calgary as well. Calgary was a much smaller group. It was around 18 individuals. So again, really nice one-on-one discussions, but without a doubt, they were coming hot and heavy at me. And you know, we did a feedback form. And one of the things was that we didn't have enough time. So for me, that's a huge success if they're feeling value at it and wanted to ask more. So without a doubt, we got into the numbers. I love it. And I know we're going to dive into them here. 
one more thing. I love that you only had 10 slides. Those are the best presentations, right? When it's just like, you know, let's get into the real conversation, not read a PowerPoint. So that's it. No, I literally in Calgary was sitting on the desk because it had been a long 48 hours and said, you know, let's open it up to the discussions and the hot topics that are social media. And this is our world. And this is what I do every day. So let's chat about an open forum where there is no right or wrong. I just want to give perspective from an employer standpoint and all the great discussions that I have with the new grads or experienced vets coming out so that they know what they're doing coming out. It was really interesting because at both colleges, I think there's still opportunity for improvement over time. They're learning about balance sheets, P and L's, et cetera. But one of the comments coming back was, I just want to see what a real contract looks like. So that's great feedback. Let's look at an actual contract because we're talking about that. What does it mean to go get legal representation and have someone review? There's a lot of individuals, the hands went up when I asked about if they knew that they were supposed to do that. And then when I asked for if they had actually done it, almost nobody kept their hands up. These little things that are so much more than a business class to the realities of the life that we're all going to go through, whether you're a vet or otherwise. Okay, well, let's dive in. And I know you've got a little uh, punch list here. So we're going to jump right in back on the money conversation. Inflation, it's everywhere. So back when we talked about it in 2021, you had mentioned, you know, average wages be for a new grad being in that 80 to 90 range, where we sit in 2023. Yep. 2023, the world has changed. It was really enjoyable to go back and listen to episode 26. You and I both don't listen to our episodes that often, (laughs) both uncomfortable. But then once you get into the meat and potatoes of it, things have changed. So right now in 2023, uh, new grads were speaking more specifically to Canada. I've helped out with a couple of US contracts, but overall, the range we're looking at is in that 95,000 to 120 plus. If we're speaking about new grads coming out, depending on region, depending on type of practice, as well as whether they're internship trained or not. All those factors come into play. And we talked about that in our live discussion is you cannot provide apples to apples between regions because depending on cost of living, what the practice and value that they're bringing in for their clients is, there is a difference to what we can pay our employees. Nice. Um, And I know we're not going to rehash too much from episode 26. We're going to build off of it. So we're not going to deep dive actual percentage production numbers on this episode. But I do have a question. As you're seeing that wage increase, is the percent production, again, on average, because it varies, you know, specialty and whatnot, is it still sitting around that 22% if we were to pick a number? Yeah. So on the small animal side, general practice, the number is still 22%. If you're talking specialty, I've been a couple of years out now. I'm still hearing 25% plus. And then on the larger mixed animal practice, there's where you're dealing with anything in between that 18, 19 to 21%. If we're looking at a Sal Pro model where you have a bonus incentive or an incentive production plan on top. This is doing, and, and for new grads coming out and recognizing that the vast majority are already into contract, it means as an employer, there is a little bit more pressure on the new grads over time. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more over time, that with these higher wages, the pressure is onto the employer to have to pay for those higher wages. So in that standpoint, it is across the board, across the industry, where we've taken a number of inflationary price increases over the past year across the board that's hitting our clients. And the clients are also now giving a little bit more pushback when they're coming in for these general procedures. And it's tough for the new grads because they're both learning their skill set, they're learning their communication modes, but they're also the expectations are out there that they're producing more. So it's an interesting quandary that we're in that we didn't talk about at all in 2021 because it was in a pre-inflationary period. Yeah. And it might be too early to get a sense, you know, is this here to stay? Is that just going to keep ratcheting up or maybe have we plateaued? But I guess that'll have to play out. No one has the crystal ball. Yeah, I think as employers right now, we're recognizing that it's a longer term payoff. And I'm speaking this purely in economic sense. Again, there's many, many intangibles that go into the hiring process and who we want to hire. But from a tangible economic sense, it's taking longer to be able to pay that back. And that's all right. Again, I spoke about this at both schools. I want to pay our vets more. This is now more in the range. When I heard 2021 at 80,000, us graduating in 2209, I was at 72. This is more towards where we need to be as new grads. And let's just keep it going. Nice. 
Okay, well, let's sort of stick with some of the conversations around dollars. Reasonably hot button issue, or I've heard a lot of chatter around it, signing bonuses. And I guess we'll throw in the mix, although they are very different and we'll separate them, retention bonuses. Where are we sitting 2023 on both of those? All over the place. That's why in our free notes, I didn't even put a number in there because I've heard everything across the board from normal 5,000, 10,000, all the way to 50,000 if you're looking at eMERGE practices in certain regions. And I'm speaking across North America. A hot topic on social media is, is that actually a true signing bonus or are they requiring you to pay it back if you leave? And they being the employer, myself being one of them, the answer is yes. With the larger signing bonuses over a period of time, if you do leave within a period of time that is determined in your contract, we are asking for a portion of that to be paid back. I recommended for our two college discussions or universities is ensure that in your contract, that's on a pro rate basis. So if your signing bonus is attached to a 12-month hold on the contract, meaning you have to be there for 12 months, well, if you leave in six months, and we don't see that a lot in veterinary medicine, then you should only have to pay 50% of that back. Before we jump over to retention on the signing bonus, what is a typical holding period? Like, is it 12 months, like one year, and you fully earned that signing bonus? Is that typical? Well, for the most part, you earn it up front or it's a split payment right at the time of signing within, let's say, 30 or 60 days of signing the contract. And then you'll receive the second portion, usually at the end of probation, if you have that six months, et cetera. That varies across the board. I've seen every different permutation of that. Okay. Sorry. I asked the question poorly. What I'm asking is when does the prorated amount go to zero where it's like, okay, you've worked here long enough. If you were to leave, you don't owe us any of the signing bonus back. It is all across the board right now. Okay. And I'm going to throw one more signing bonus question at you. This is unverified. I'm going just off of what I've seen on social media. I've I've even heard of some or seen some six-figure signing bonuses, right? Where they talk about like 100K type things. Then there will be discussion around, okay, if a clinic has to offer a six-figure signing bonus, is there something wrong with the culture of the clinic? Yeah. And so totally unfair because I haven't prepped you for this question at all, but what are you seeing or what are your thoughts on that? Like are yep. massive signing bonuses a red flag or is that just, that's where we are in 2023? If you were to ask me that a year ago, and I was thinking about this as you were speaking, I would have said major red flag. And I look in the CVMA, which is a Canadian Veterinary Medical Association. I look at those every single month. I look at the ABVMA. I'm online seeing what ads look like a year ago. That was a major red flag. Now, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. It's the bigger corporate groups that tend to be throwing those huge bonuses out. I can't speak to the culture of those individual clinics because for the most part, I don't know where they're at right now because too much time has transpired since they were purchased. My view, if you're going that big, there's things that I think you need to look into. That's my view. And sorry, and I won't put you too much on the spot, but when you say things you need to look into, just make sure, you know, clinic culture and things are as they seem, like look under the hood really well. Is that kind of- Look under the hood and do your references, which is the same thing that I would say for anybody that's looking at doing, taking a new position. Informally, make some phone calls and understand what the market in that area looks like. If you're being asked to sign a $50,000 signing bonus, what's the expectations for delivery? And again, understand that if you're a starving student and you need to pay off debt and you know that sounds really exciting and you put that rate to your line of credit or some type of debt, but then things don't go well, make sure you can get out because you can get yourself in a really hot spot there. And if that money's already gone to pay off debt, you're not going to get it back. So again, just understand what you're signing. Yeah. One thing that jumped out and then we're going to jump over to retention bonuses. When you had said, make some informal reference checks And I'm just highlighting the word informal because in my experience, there is a lot of value in that. And what I mean by that, you know, is getting out in front of someone face-to-face with a coffee in your hand, they are going to tell you a lot more than they're going to over email or text message, right? And that's just the way it is, right? I completely agree. Post-COVID, especially as a student, if you want to put yourself out there and, and be ahead of the game ask for a coffee conversation. It's something within Mosaic we're really proud of. We're doing a lot. Even if the student is in third year or fourth year, go do that. But then after that, go phone your friends up. Go make informal conversations. We do the exact same thing. I was on the phone with probably four or five people last week as we're right in the middle of contract season, just understanding what's happening. Now, this is opinion and not fact-based. There are certain states where you cannot do that. 
I am out of Canada. There's some different rules. And again, want to ensure that people are being safe within the legalities of their state or province. Nice. Okay, let's jump over uh, retention bonuses. And you even have in their hybrid version. So where's that sitting? Yep. So a retention bonus by definition is something that gets paid out after a certain amount of time of you being at that practice. Classic example would be if you start your work on January 1st of 2023, we will pay you a retention bonus if you're still present at the practice on December 31st of 2023. By definition, if you have either quit, been let go without cause or heaven forbid fired, you would not receive that bonus or even if you were still there on December 30th. A retention bonus can be anything from a one-year duration to every year duration, depending on what that contract setup is. And so when I'm saying a hybrid version is now you're getting into that case where you have signing bonuses that are also acting as retention bonuses, where you'll get a portion of it up front, you might get a portion in the middle, and you might get a portion at 12 months. Or because of the size of that bonus, it actually might be extended out to 24 months or even 36 months. From an employer standpoint, that helps with cash flow, that helps with mitigating risk in terms of if that individual leaves or doesn't pan out. And frankly, at the start of a relationship with a new grad, we're not exactly sure where that is going to go. We have best intentions on both parts, or else why would we be forming this work and relationship? But it's a way of spreading risk for everybody. Nice. Okay, I'm chiming in again off script because I can, and I have no you know, dog in this hunt. A word of caution, this is more on the employee side, as you have, I mean, I'm a big fan of retention bonuses, so don't get me wrong here. Like, I think it's great to reward those employees that are with you. And from my opinion, if I was a veterinary clinic owner, I would way rather keep my employees than have churn and have to, you know, constantly bring new people in. So my, my word of caution would be for an employee, if you find yourself in a situation that's not super desirable, but there's always that carrot where it's like, okay, just stick this out six more months and I get another year end bonus. And then now by the time that's paid out your January, February, the next year, you're like, okay, well, what's another, I'm going to stick out for that next bonus. And it can become a situation where that carrot is always just right there and keep you in a situation that you don't want to be. So just trying to separate that, you know, because you can get emotional when you're kind of caught in that loop. And I think what also needs to be recognized, because your points are completely valid, is this is the norm in the business world. If you're in the corporate world outside of veterinary medicine, this is the normal way of doing business where you have what's called the golden handcuffs in a way where you have to stay with that business for a certain amount of time for some of those bonuses to kick in, depending on what it looks like. Sometimes it can be very lucrative. We haven't seen that in the veterinary industry before. So now it's all of a sudden this big thing, but I'm putting my hands out there going, this has been done for decades in the corporate world. Absolutely. And it is, I won't spend much time because it's not as applicable, but they can start to stack like maybe ownership or stock options in there. And it can, you can find yourself in a situation where it's financially very difficult to leave because you're saying goodbye to a lot of money. But I just wanted to point that out before people find themselves in those, in those situations. So yeah. And if they find themselves in those situations, it could be a positive work out what the pros and cons are and understand what you're signing yourself up for. You bet. Okay. We're going to kind of pivot off of monetary items. Do you have any other financial thing to add in on contracts before we continue on? No, I think we might touch on a couple more in the extras portion, but no, not right now. Okay. Yep. And I will just make a comment because we did say this in the previous episode. We opened this episode talking about money. That doesn't mean it's the most important thing, no. right? It's definitely a factor, but as you're going to find out, there's a lot of other stuff that comes in. In the real estate space, we always talk about price and terms, you know, and there'll, there'll be sort of a cliche saying where it's like, well, you can have your price, but I get my terms right? Or you can have your terms, but I get my price, right? Price isn't the be all and end all. So kind of moving on the next sort of hot button item, non-competes, right? And I know we touched on it on the previous episode, but it's definitely worth diving further into. So 2023, where are we sitting with non-competes? Yep. 2023, there's uh, a lot of discussion going online and on social media, et cetera. My notes here are pretty simple. Still in the vast majority of contracts I'm reviewing and signing, the non-competes are still present. Now, what I'm really happy with are that students and veterinarians are becoming aware and educated on what a non-compete is. And as I put here, depending on the state, the type of practice and economic value you're bringing into the business 
it is my view and it doesn't agree with everybody's that non-competes are still present. And I'm separating it out non-competes and non-solicitations. And that is very regionally and type of practice specific. If you're a specialist coming into a center as a resident coming out of school, expectations you're signing a non-compete are there. If you're in the urban center of a large city with lots of competition around, the expectations around non-compete are disappearing pretty quickly and in certain states and provinces becoming illegal depending on the type of business. So as an example, where I practice mixed animal and we'll have one or two businesses in a quite a large geographic area, then those non-competes will still exist and also be enforceable depending on the province that we're in. I spoke about this at the student's fair, at the student's presentation though, is that understanding what's in a contract and a discussion between individuals are two different things. I want to ensure that there is a discussion that happens between individuals if something doesn't happen within a contract or the relationship comes to an end. There is some bad blood out there. And that's unfortunate because I think the conversation is sometimes just black and white, but I think there's more gray and nuance to it that happens through communication and discussion together. Okay. I was going to put you on the spot and and say like the bull and bear, the pro and con for non-competes, right? Because there is differing opinions. And I'll hear some stuff where people are like, non-compete should just full stop be banned. But I can see the case on the business side, like especially when you're talking you know, mixed animal where it's like, you're going to just move like one block down the street and compete in the same industry. So I can get it. So what would you say kind of the pro and the con give a side of each coin? I think you just did. I think you completely just did. I think if there's a good relationship and good time, a non-compete's going to help the employer. And it's going to ensure that that employer's business viability, especially when we're talking large geography, is able to be maintained for that portion of time. I think from a negative, it means that if there's an individual there that has their hometown, et cetera, then that's a conversation that should start from the start of that working relationship is going, I'm not willing to sign this non-compete because maybe I have a farm there. Maybe I want to grow within the business and buy into the business. That's a discussion that, hey, let's get those out on the table at the start. Also recognizing for new grads, sometimes they don't know that yet. And you know what? That's all right. Let's discuss it over time because like anything in a contract, things over time are negotiable. And if something's changed in your life, something's changed in our life related to that business, let's discuss it. In the urban center, my view in 2023 is a little bit different than what it was in 2021. There's lots of competition. There's lots of need out there. If someone's not working and there is a lot of veterinary clinics around there and you want to go work in them, have at her. That's my feeling now. And even if you go down the block, there's probably a reason you're going down the block and I wish you luck and actually want to help you succeed. So that's a change since 2021. And I think nice. actually the pendulum might swing back. I don't know. We're going to see what recession does and everything else. But right now that's my view for urban. Yeah. Nice. You did raise a great point in there. The veterinary employment contract, sure, it'll have a term to it when you sign it. We'll use a year for an arbitrary number, but they are rolling, right? If everything is going well and you stay at the vet clinic, you're going to roll into year two and year three and year four. But as you said, your life will be different. So there's there's no problem jumping in at year two, year three and saying, hey, can we revisit? Can we revise? Let's look at this. So I think that's a good point because sometimes it's people might take a set it and forget it approach. Yeah. Most people do, right? Because again, I'll speak to the vast majority of styles in veterinary medicine is we're conflict adverse. We don't want to actively look after conflict. And truthfully, it's not conflict, but it is having that uncomfortable start of the conversation, which leads to change. Change can be uncomfortable, but if you don't do it, then you don't have a chance. And again, that goes back to a previous discussion we had that is if you don't ask, the answer will be no. That was back when we were doing quick tips. Quick tips. That was the quick tip for the first contract. So long ago. So long ago. I am going to just chime in quickly on, you said conflict averse, just doubling down on the importance of contracts. I think we said in the previous episode, we go in with rose colored glasses and it's when things start to get a little messy and muddy, you know, and you have to rely on that, that contract. I was kind of in a bit of a conflict in on a real estate contract between us and the seller. And it is a good thing that we had sort of that like contract spelling out exactly what will happen. Right. And so I don't want to give too many details, but I mean, the contract was in our favor and we had a very reluctant seller that was trying to push around it. And we're like, look, it is spelled out right here, like word for word. Right. So it's, I'm just doubling down on the importance of having contracts 
in writing. And I'm going to add something to that if I can. I'll put you on the spot. Was was that discussion between you and the seller directly or was it through lawyers? So, in, I mean, in the real estate world, you're going through a broker. A broker, right? Yep. So it, it was not direct. It wasn't me to seller. There was a real estate agent in the middle. But this particular one did elevate to the point where we had to say, okay, it's going lawyer to lawyer now. And I mean, that is that is 100% not my preference. Yep. You know, when I look at the veterinary employment world, I think it should be, you know, employee straight to like the manager, the clinic owner, whatever that looks like. Yep. I agree. Okay. No, thanks. I appreciate that, the education. And it just shows how important contracts are, which I'm going to jump right to the last point here and make it because I think it fits in here is it's not good enough to be either an independent practice or a corporate practice in 2023 with only a verbal or in my view, a two-page contract. So for students out there that are still in negotiation times, I feel that we are moving the education forward, we as an industry, us in a little, little part of it, to ensuring that people are looking at a higher standard of quality to the contracts that they're signing. Very important so that you're protected just to the point that Mike has just provided for. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, well, let's jump back in. Extras in a contract. So as we said, it's not just price, it's not just non-competes and signing bonuses. What other stuff can people ask for? Yes. So in the last year here, some of the extras that have come into contract negotiations, do you need more time off than what's provided for? Depending on the corporation or the clinic that you're looking to get connected with as a, a working relationship, perhaps you need that. Perhaps your spouse is out of town and you need that time to go visit. Perhaps your farm is a little ways away where you want some extra time to be able to spend on there. Do you want to do some traveling, especially for students coming out? You have those negotiation abilities where you can say, hey, I'm not going to start till a certain time. Or in one of our negotiations, I'm going to start at a certain time, then I'm going to take a block off. And let's talk about that. That's an extra and it's fantastic. And now's your time to talk about it. You want to take some extra CE. There is nothing more awesome to an employer's ears when you come in and say, hey, I want to go take that ultrasound course, that dentistry course, those pieces that are going to lead to your own self-fulfillment and challenges of your career, but also to the economic success, any intangible extras at a clinic. Talk about that. Don't be afraid of it. Those are extras that can go in a contract. We now within Mosaic have wellness hours, defined sick times. What do those days look like? Again, for most new grads out there, no idea what that is. Ask for it, ensure that those are part of the discussion that's happening. Define terms about mentorship, which is a whole different conversation that we'll have again on the podcast. Understanding what mentorship means to you, what your definition is, what type of skill sets you're looking for. I have heard now through one of the individuals speaking with that they had that defined in their contract. That's fantastic. Extra flexibility around financial student debt repayment. There is individuals and corporations that are doing that now. What does that look like? How often? What does it mean for decreasing your debt owed over time for being with that clinic? And last but not least, there's many, many pieces related to relocation, housing allowance, all these pieces that can come into play as the extras for veterinary contracts in 2023. Nice. And that is, you said it already, but if you don't ask, the answer is no. So that's a good time to, to discuss them right up front. Agreed. Kind of leaning in, I guess, anything more to add on that before we move on to another bullet point? Nope. Okay. Another one, Jonathan kind of noted, you know, in his conversations, as we said, Calgary, Saskatoon, compliments to the students because they're continually becoming more informed. And I, I think back to when I graduated, to be honest, I don't even know if I officially had a contract at my first clinic. And even if I did, it would have been something along the lines of, yeah, cool. I trust you. Sign it. Done. But you're saying, you know, the students nowadays are playing at a much higher level. Yes. And so that's what it's about. It's a, it's a compliment to the entire system. You know, you have the MBAs happening in the States. You have business chapters happening in the States and Canada, and I'm sure abroad. You have a lot of practice management advisors that are providing great conference proceedings on how to do and have these types of discussions. And you can just feel it. You can see it. And the more individuals are informed, the better this leads to a stronger relationships, especially for students going out there. Sometimes you can get burned before you figure out, oh, I should have figured that out. I'm seeing less and less of that out there. Now people want to be informed before they're putting their name to a, a contract, which is amazing. Nice. Okay. Well, yes. we're wrapping up here. I'm going to add one more bullet point in. I think it's probably the most important point when you're negotiating anything and that's time. 
And so what I'm meaning by that is leave yourself time to properly read, review, and negotiate a contract, right? You don't want to show up somewhere on Friday and, and be like, I have to have this locked in by Monday, right? Like you're just putting constraints on yourself. And, and I mean, you can really play with time. Like you're going to find one of the parties probably has a more pressing need, whether it's the student that has to get to work because they have to start earning or it's the clinic that's like, I need someone yesterday, right? But you have to try to emotionally separate from these time constraints because they can influence your decision-making and make you make decisions that maybe weren't in your best interest. So I'll let you chime in and add to that or agree or disagree. No, I completely agree with it. And I'm just going to add to it as saying, when you become educated and plan, you're going to have a better outcome. And so think about, we spoke about this with the students, think about what you want. Talk about with your colleagues, talk about those with that graduated the year or two before you and understand what's available. Taking podcasts as an example like this becomes more informed, get them down on paper and understand that it's a conversation and that you can be in, anywhere in between a couple of conversations all the way to six to eight to 10 sometimes, depending on the complexity of the contract. When you're aware of that, you know what you're going into, you're bound to have a better end. Nice. Okay. Well, I think we're basically about ready to wrap up this one. Anything we may have missed? Man, I hope there's some value for people out there. You know, we we touched on tangibles and intangibles today. The market is a different one in 2023 versus 2021. You and me have a little bit of gray hairs now, and that's not due to contract negotiations, but time and wisdom and experience. So darn it, I hope that this has been a value to those that are listening out there. Always appreciate the yeah. feedback or any comments I've coming back. I mean, I feel like it is. When I re-listened to uh, episode 26, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I wish I would have known this when I was starting out, when I was negotiating contracts. So I have no doubt that there is. Recording this on a Saturday, let's get everyone out of here. What's up for the rest of the weekend, Jonathan? And send us on our way with kind of the final word. Final word. We still got a little bit of skiing left in the season. Looking forward to going out skiing tomorrow with a good friend. I haven't adult skied for a while, so that will be new. For everybody out there, your world is your oyster. Be prepared. Enjoy the conversation. Know that'll be a little uncomfortable and that's all right. Thank you for listening to the Veterinary Project Podcast. As a recap on behalf of our hosts, the Veterinary Project Podcast will be releasing new episodes every two weeks. So be sure to tune in as we bring you more conversations aimed at helping you enjoy a life well lived. If you enjoyed what you heard on the show and want to stay in the know, Please like, love, and or subscribe to the podcast on the listening platform of your choosing, as we're available on all the usual suspects. If you know of others who may benefit from these conversations, we'd love it if you shared the show with them. This helps us to grow our community and reach more and more veterinary professionals, just like you. Speaking of which, if you would like to get connected with more like-minded individuals who are joining us on this journey, please send us a message via Instagram at The Veterinary Project and we'll invite you to be a part of our private Facebook group. General feedback, requests for information, or requests to be a guest on the show can also be sent via direct message to our Instagram, at The Veterinary Project. Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light, thank you for listening to the show, and we'll catch you again in two weeks for another episode of The Veterinary Project Podcast. Bye for now. Bye for now.